Myth Vision is going to Israel. I've been requested to lead a tour, not only in the Dead Sea, Jerusalem, but also in the north of the Galilee. We're going to be going to the locations, not only that we discovered the Dead Sea Scrolls, which are the oldest papyri animal skin fragments that have anything of the Bible written on them. This is the earliest material evidence of the Bible in history. And we're going to be entering several of those caves, going off the beaten path that all of the other tours usually do. Skeptics and Scholars Expedition, you don't want to miss it. We're not going to go dupe you into a 4th century supposed empty tomb or a supposed place Jesus went to. This is critical scholarship. And we're going to the places that scholars would say, if there was a historical Jesus, this is where he would have gone. And this is what would have happened according to our testimony we have in the Gospels. So I'm hoping everybody tuning in now will go and join us. This is literally a once in a lifetime deal. Dr. Kip Davis, Dr. Matthew Munger are both Dead Sea Scroll scholars. They know their stuff. They're going to be touring us down in the Qumran section. We'll be going to Ein Gedi. We'll be going to Masada. These are places where we discovered the scrolls and also in Qumran. I know you don't want to miss this. You'll be able to meet us in person, Myth Vision. I'll have Gnostic Informant there. Ross Nichols, who's like a modern day treasure hunter. Trust me, you don't want to miss that guy. He's going to be taking you down serious deep dives in Jerusalem that most people don't know about. Our last experience was life changing and I'm hoping to see many people go. I'll be leading the tour. It will be documented. We're recording. So you can get a lot of one on one time with some of your favorite people. I'm hoping to see you there. Let's discuss some of the stuff that we're going to be going into. The tour starts with us landing in Israel, driving a comfortable bus ride down to the Dead Sea. You're going to see all of the surrounding area in the desert like an ancient Israelite would. That night, we're going to decompress, try to catch up from the flight, and the next morning, we're heading to Masada, the last stand, where the Jews stood against the Romans, and they literally stayed till they died, as recorded in Josephus. We're going to see Herod's palace on the top, and several of the interesting archaeological sites that are atop Masada, imagining seeing the old camps from the Romans that actually waited for them to thirst and hunger to death. And they ended up destroying and killing those on the top, or they committed suicide. Very difficult to know what ultimately happened, but we did find 14 scrolls or portions of 14 scrolls atop Masada, biblical, sectarian, apocryphal. I mean, these people seem to have been very apocalyptic type. After we leave Masada, we're going to Ein Gedi. You're going to be able to see the oasis teeming with local wildlife, adorned with tropical foliage. You're going to have an enjoyable walk. Seeing this right here in the midst of all of this desert land is a very interesting experience. We'll go back to our hotels. You can enjoy the spas, the shopping, everything. Float in the Dead Sea. Trust me, you're going to want to remember this one forever. Because you're going to be at the lowest point on planet Earth. I hope you're prepared for that in the Dead Sea with all the minerals floating. Try swimming to the bottom and see how long you can stay down there. It's your buoyancy. You're just going to go straight to the top. It's an amazing sight. And then looking at the night sky from the desert where the ancient Israelites would have. The next morning, we head to the Qumran National Park. We're going to enjoy seeing where the Qumran community was, where their dead were buried, how they set up shop in the desert. This was a wilderness experience for them in the ancient world, a very religious one for them. And this is where many of the caves that we discovered most of our fragments of the Dead Sea Scrolls are at. Cave 4, Cave 11, several other caves are right here in this vicinity. And we're actually going to go down the street and enter into a couple of those caves. All of this will be recorded. So we're going to have a memory to be able to take back that we've never forgotten. You're going to meet all of us. Let's have a blast while we're here. But that same day, we're going to leave the Qumran National Park and head to Jerusalem to go to the Israel Museum. Before we hit the Israel Museum, we want to check the Mount of Olives out and view Jerusalem where the ancient temple would have stood. That same place where Jesus would have probably set foot with his disciples as the Gospels record. And he says, you see these, these stones, you see these temples? Well, looking off from the Mount of Olives as Matthew 24 has, this is going to be destroyed. 
I think it was written after the fact. We're going to do that as scholars and skeptics and such, but you're going to be able to see the sites, what it would have been like in the ancient world to view this complex. Then we're going to the actual museum, Israel Museum, where they housed the Dead Sea Scrolls, the Book of the Shrine, and all of the various other archaeological finds about Israel that we can discover in that museum. That museum will be open late that night, which is why this works perfectly for this tour. All along this this tour being guided by me, you're going to have Kip Davis and Matthew Munger leading us in the Dead Sea Scroll areas, educating us on what we can know and experience from their expertise. Once we leave the Israel Museum that night, you go back to your comfy hotels in Jerusalem and relax. Because the next morning we're waking up early and we're heading to the Temple Mount. After we leave Jerusalem, because we'll be there for three days, you'll have time to explore the old city. You'll see the Welling Wall where Jews who nod as they pray against that wall are leaning left. And once we go up on the Temple Mount and I show you the big Dome of the Rock is, you're going to see a little place where the Holy of Holies is supposedly was located and Jews are tilting their head as they're down there at the Welling Wall. You'll see down below. Getting there in person changes your perspective. You'll see they're tip tilting their head towards that Holy of Holies. At least the Jews that know what they're doing. We'll be exiting there once we leave that location and we have fun in Jerusalem. You explore the old city, go down there, go shop, go haggle with the Arabs, then go haggle with the Christians, have fun, enjoy it. And then we're doing a haunted Valley of Hinnom tour led by yours truly. Gnostic Informant will be helping me as well as Ross Nichols. You don't want to miss that tour. We're going into Gehenna. Who doesn't want to go to hell with me? Come on. We're going down to the Lake of Fire. We're going to be touring that at night like a haunted tour because there's a lot of history there. Lots of dead bodies were probably thrown outside of the city walls after the Jerusalem War or if you will 70 AD with Rome. Day five, early bird gets the worm. We're tracking the scrolls or independent exploration. So you have two options. One, you go with Dr. Kip Davis and Matthew Munger and you check out the tour finding the Dead Sea Scrolls and immerse yourself in that extraordinary journey of the Dead Sea Scrolls. Visit the site where their story began, Kando's shop in Bethlehem, the very place where the Bedouins sold their, their first finds of the Dead Sea Scrolls. Continue this narrative exploration at St. Mark's Monastery, where more of the scrolls were clandestinely kept, and later the Albright Institute. The option number two for those who join the tour is independent exploration or a guided tour of hidden Jerusalem gems with Ross K. Nichols. He is going to take you on various sites. If you want to go down into David's city, you want to go see what's going on with Hezekiah's tunnel, the Hinnom tunnel, you don't want to miss this. This is going to be a lifetime experience you're going to take back forever. We're going to leave and head north to the Lake of Galilee, Lake Tiberias, Sea of Galilee, whatever you want to call it. We'll be seeing a few sites on the way up there. I'm not sure 100% if we're going to see the Mount Ebal curse tablet would have been located, but I know we're going to see a few ancient Israelite archaeological sites as we head up to that lake. We're going to be staying up there at Lake Tiberias for three days. The Gospel of Mark, our earliest gospel, has Jesus roaming around right there around that lake at all the synagogues, debating other rabbis. Peter's house was right there in Capernaum. All of these sites, archaeologically, we've discovered. We're going to go right there on the lake, seeing all these different sites. We're going to be right there in the region of Caesarea Philippi, checking that out before we hit a Druze restaurant. And that's the same place where Jesus is standing there saying to his disciples, who do men say that I am? Now, when you're reading that in a book, a Bible, that, you know, carries theological significance. Is he saying he's the Trinity? Is he saying he's literally God equal with the Father? What's he saying? But then when you actually stand in the archaeological sites where Herod built a temple to Caesar Augustus, the temple of Pan is right there. The portal into the underworld to hell, to Hades, is right there. And then you stand there and you imagine Jesus standing there amongst all these demigods, other claimants to being divine. And they're all saying, look at me, worship me, see me as a god. And then Jesus says, whether he actually said this or not in real life, who do men say that I am standing in this area, almost like a gangster on a new block? And he says, hey, who do men say that I am? It brings a whole different depth 
to the meaning of him asking that question on those sites. Everything has changed my perspective there. We will literally take a boat ride on the lake, the same lake that Jesus supposedly calmed the storm and had the divine powers to do so. We're not talking about all the other deities that have done such things or even Buddha. We're talking about Jesus. We're taking this skeptical scholarly approach. Three days up there, seeing several different sites. Then as we leave, we're going to be passing by Sepphoris, the neighboring town to Nazareth. You can literally see Nazareth in eye distance. Sepphoris was a very well-known city at that time. Nazareth was nothing. Small little hick town. But Sepphoris was huge. It was a big, big deal in the first century around the time that Jesus was on the scene, being born and probably got a lot of labor over in Sepphoris. We will see some of the sites, the stones that were laid and such. And you have to ask yourself the question, did Jesus touch some of these stones? Did he play as a tecton? Some scholars think might be a stonemason, not just some wood carpenter, but a stonemason building some of the city. I don't know. It's really interesting, the synagogues that we'll see in those locations with their zodiac signs and some part Greek, part Hebrew inscriptions that are on the ground. You don't want to miss it. After we leave Sepphoris, we'll probably hit Megiddo, and then we will hit Caesarea Maritima. That's where Herod built a massive, massive structure for Caesar Augustus. That is such a huge complex. They have horse racing. They have all sorts of stuff. You can see the remnants of ancient spa baths that they would have had from that time period in the first century. Really mind-boggling when you go and see how much Herod actually built in this time and he devoted himself completely to caesar augustus after his political original political alliances were no longer on the scene you want to learn a lot of history you want to bring back some memories you want to have an experience you've never had while myth vision's going and leading a tour i hope you will join us as Neil from Gnostic Informant, Kip Davis, Matthew Munger, Ross Nichols, and several of the people you probably see that are always in the live chat supporting what we're doing here, we're going to be there. Go to MythVisionTour.com. You can get a lot more of the details and sites that we're actually going to explore there. You don't want to miss it. It's going to be a game changer, unlike anything you've ever seen before. Why not? Everyone goes over there for the holy tours, and they go for their faith and such. I tell you, as someone who's skeptical, it brought a lot more value into the research that we do and understanding it from more of a humanist, secular point of view. Approaching this with historical methodology, it still doesn't take away the wonder and awe and story that we are reading and learning about in our Bibles. So please check it out. Let me know if you do. All the information you need will be on the website. So I'll see you there. Sign up. Early Bird gets the best seats on the bus, and you're not going to want to miss this intellectual adventure. This is going to be a life-changing experience. You can guarantee that. www.mythvisiontour.com. When you go to the webpage, if you want to dive deeper into seeing the itinerary, where we're going, what we're doing, and the options, you click right here and it'll download the itinerary for you to see. You go to register here if you don't mind going in a double with someone or if you're coming with someone. But if you're wanting a single room, you have a single supplement option, you have to click there, then you register. Once you go to register, you fill out the information here and you register. If you have any questions, you can call the number in the upper right hand corner of the website and they'll help you out. I can't wait to lead this tour with you.